This is the weekly review for the week of February 27th to March 3rd, as well as this week's Sunday preparation. So coming into the week, I was anticipating a bearish week where we traded up into this daily breaker up in here um, in this daily fair valley gap, taking out Thursday's high up here. Uh, this was a daily high. And I was thinking that we were going to make the high of the week on Tuesday and then continue trading off uh, down to complete this potential daily market maker sell model it looks like we're in. So <clears throat> that's why on Monday's trading, I was looking for long setups. And we did actually get quite a few nice setups on Monday. Um, so initially we had uh, what I saw on the charts when I got on at around eight o'clock was that we had pretty bullish price action printed with a, a small Judas swing below the 12 a.m. price and then expansion away from it. And then right here at 8 a.m., we took out relative equal lows with SMT, had displacement up, and then broke market structure and came back down into the breaker and the fair value gap and continue trading higher. So the trade that I was watching was this one uh, right here where we created this M15 Fair Valley Gap right here or really it was just a multiple time frame and efficiency because we had M5 and below Fair Valley Gaps here as well. And I was watching the discount uh, or the mean threshold of the dealing range from that high to that low. And I... <clears throat> just set this up as a hypothetical entry. And I saw that we had created equal highs with previous day high and previous day high was my drawn liquidity because I was bullish on Monday, expecting price to trade up from the weekly opening price to make the high of the week. And we see here at 945, we got the entry and immediately delivered to the upside, taking previous day high. I also noted how the consequent encroachment of this M15 Fair Valley Gap was respected as well. That's this dotted uh, 0.5 line here. And then after um, the session on Monday, I went back and I looked at the M1. Um, I wasn't watching the M1 live. Uh, I was just watching this M m5 slash m15 trade live but when i went back um i wanted to see what the m1 did and i found these two compound entries that uh were really really beautiful um we're here at 9 30 so 9 30 is either going to take liquidity or rebalance uh, imbalance and here we rebalance this M15 fair value gap, respect the mean threshold, have displacement up, break market structure, and we come back down into this fair value gap here. Um, <clears throat> I do note that we don't come back down into discount, but the reason why I noted this is because the RR of this trade is still really good based on the previous day high drawn liquidity. Um, the reason why I typically don't like to enter in premium on a long or discount on a short is because usually the RR is completely fucked and it's like com below one. Um, but in this case, uh, based on where I would have put my stop below this second fair valley gap here, um, it still gives you a two to one R trade, which is more than enough. Um, so I really like this trade. I put this in my journal as well. <clears throat> So yeah, came back down here, uh, continued displacing higher. We still didn't take previous day high and it gave one more entry and this was a one-to-one -one trade um, up to previous day high. And these three trades here to me just, this is beautiful. The bias was super clean um, from the higher time frame down to M15 and down to M1. So uh, I really like these three trades. And then what I noted was <clears throat> initially I was expecting price on Monday to trade higher. Um, I was watching 
this order block here, uh, which is noted by the breaker, because uh, obviously we broke market structure, but before we broke market structure, that was an order block in this fair valley gap here. And I was watching to see if price wanted to come down here into the order block in fair valley gap and trade higher to take Thursday high. But once we uh, got this big bearish candle down here, breaking market structure, um, or this one here, breaking market structure, and I saw this SMT, um, I kind of reflected and I noted that Monday is typically consolidation. So that's why it's probably unlikely for this to RTO the bullish order block and go higher. And it's more likely to stay in a range. Um, and that's why I noted this trade here, um, this fair valley gap, this breaker, and targeting the low here because on a short-term basis the open float is going to be this sell side liquidity below this low if we're going to remain in consolidation so that's what the algorithm should target and that's what we ended up doing here um, the one thing i did note was that <clears throat> the only reason why when i was watching this live i wasn't comfortable in getting in a trade um, or hypothetically getting in a trade was because DXY didn't have a comparable break in market structure bullish. But everything else was super clean. I believe this was the move right at 1025. Yeah, 1025. So that was the swing low. And there was no swing high broken here until up in here. Um, could have used this one as a market structure shift, but that didn't get broken until decisively until like 11.05. And the entry here happened at 11.05, ah, 11.10. So I think what I was watching was this one here. That's why. So this one could have could have um, worked out. I need to update my journal with that. <clears throat> but yeah, we RTO the breaker and Fair Valley Gap. We didn't get up into premium, um, but I just did note this breaker, uh, which is potentially why we didn't come up into premium um, because the breaker itself isn't in premium or most of it isn't. And we come down, take the sell side, and that was pretty much it for me in terms of reading price. Um, I did note this SMT break in market structure here in the PM session, but the bias for me wasn't super clear in the PM session as it was here, where we're going to be consolidating. So we took significant liquidity, had displacement down, and we took this. After that, after this trade hit this sell side, that was pretty much it for me for the day. So even though I didn't note this after the fact, I wasn't watching any of this live and annotating it live. Um, but it was a very good Monday uh, trading with four opportunities to get in. So then going into Tuesday's trading, I was continuing to look for bullish price action um, to take out Thursday's high. And I saw we had a SMT with previous day's low. We rated that and came all the way up here, took Asian high. There was no SMT or anything here. So this is the mean threshold of an hourly order block. And this was the mean threshold of the dealing range. And I set a hypothetical limit at this breaker and fair valley gap in here um, on an M15 basis. And I was looking to target <clears throat> these relative equal highs here, one, two, and three, um, because DXY also had a set of relative equal lows on Tuesday.
these ones right here. Now, when I entered this trade, DXY took its relative equal lows when price was RTOing this bearish fair value gap here. It's around 845.9. And I was thinking that ES wasn't moving aggressively up in a way from this fair value gap. And in my mind, I thought that they could be holding ES in consolidation for some reason because we didn't see a big range expansion away from this breaker and fair value gap. And I kind of felt like closing the trade here because DXY had already taken um, its set of equal lows. So um, I didn't end up doing that. I just ended up holding on to it and I got stopped out here. But uh, that was like my thought process when I was just tape reading this live. And the whole day ended up being consolidation uh, where DXY did print some bullish price action uh, where we took those equal lows and immediately rejected higher. Um, but once I got stopped out here, I pretty much just waited for 930 open to see what it did. And we really just had consolidation in here. Um, I did go in and annotate a M1 setup off of the 930 open where we took this sell side and came down into an order block here and had a failure swing SMT with London low and had immediate displacement to the upside here. And I just noted this fair valley gap to target the low hanging fruit up above this short term high. But on the M5 and M15, for me, the bias wasn't clear um, on Tuesday. And I pretty much just ended up closing the charts after I got stopped out. Um, when I went back to annotate, I noted that because I thought that we were going to be in consolidation because we had 9.30 open and then 10 a.m. high impact news and it didn't really do anything. I felt that the rest of the day was going to be consolidation. Um, I noted this potential entry here with the logic of targeting the a.m. session high if we're going to be in a consolidation profile. Um, and it did almost get up into that, but we had a SMT there, but <clears throat> you had partial opportunities here and here and above this high here. So I didn't really like Monday, uh, Tuesday's trading too much. Um, but yeah. Then going into Wednesday's trading, I didn't really know what the bias was going to be anymore because I thought Tuesday was going to make the high of the week. And Pretty much Wednesday, didn't really annotate much. Um, didn't know what the hell really went on on Wednesday. So there was nothing really clean for me to annotate here. And yeah, best to just skip that day. Um, and then th that same thing happened with Thursday's trading. The only thing I did note was another 9.30 open setup where we came down into this daily order block here and we're having bullish SMTs with previous day low and previous week's low. And 9.30 took short term sell side had displacement up, came back down into this volume imbalance and this breaker. 
and went up to take the uh, AM high here or the high of the day. Could have also just targeted the low hanging fruit here. <coughs> but in terms of the bias, I was not clear on Thursday's trading at all. Um, but at the end of the day on Thursday's trading is when I did get the bias um, because we had this break in market structure up here. So what I noted was that for the last week, we've pretty much just been exclusively taking sell side. So we took sell side here, took sell side here, took sell side here, took sell side here. So the majority of the open float is now on buy side where we've pretty much just created a bunch of equal highs here, equal highs here, equal highs here, another high here. So there was no buy side taken out for the last week. And I remember ICT saying um, the same pattern here uh, in multiple live stream sessions where if we're taking out one side of the market heavily, it's likely to reverse and take the other side. And once we had this break in market structure right here, um, I noted Thursday night that the bias for Friday was going to be bullish for me. And that was super clear. And I was anticipating price to RTO this breaker. That's not what I want to do. This breaker um, in this for Valley Gap. We ended up being so bullish on Friday, we didn't get any RTO at all. And we basically got a very small Judas swing below the 12 a.m. opening price. So just a few points below, like maybe three points below the 12 a.m. opening price and immediately rallied up. So this was extremely bullish. And Friday uh, ended up being another super, super clean day, uh, just like Monday. Pretty much for me this week, it was Monday and Friday's trading that um, – made the week pretty much Tuesday through Thursday. Um, not super clear at all Tuesday, like relatively, but then Wednesday and Thursday really didn't see anything. Um, but what I noted for Friday was this <clears throat> M15 breaker here. So we took uh, sell side here and this, the breaker, the order block here and this, Fair Valley Gap up in here. And this um, is the premium and discount of the dealing range. So <clears throat> I had a hypothetical entry right here and I was targeting um, a partial. So this is Thursday high, uh, previous Thursday's high. Um, these were relative equal highs that were made this week. And then uh, this is the low hanging fruit. So my hypothetical trade was a, a partial here, a partial here, and then a partial up in here. Um, and that ended up playing out very nicely. Oh, and the other thing to note is 8.30 also gave uh, the initial entry here, um, short term sell side taken with SMT breaker market structure back down to the fair Valley gap breaker and order block. Uh, but I'd rather just wait for 930. And also just like on Monday, the M1 gave another compound entry here, where 9.30 went down to rebalance the imbalance, had displacement to the upside, and then I was watching this trade right here, live, entry right here, institutional order flow entry drill. Um, obviously didn't come down into discount, but this was another scenario where the RR still provided a good um, a good setup here, a 1.4 R that's good to take out this low hanging fruit short-term buy side. 
Now, I was also watching this setup right here with this Fair Valley Gap as a potential compound entry, but we had high impact news at 10 a.m. And I was anticipating this Fair Valley Gap to fail because on high impact news, that's gonna take liquidity. And that's exactly what we did here. So the short term open float is now on sell side because we had this move up, Every, everyone's buying this and putting their stop here. So that's why 10 a.m. high impact news ended up coming back down into the initial, the initial entry here into the M15 breaker order block for Valley Gap. It's fine that price came back down into that. We still respected it, but it was because we created the short term low and 10 a.m. Uh, or not 10 a.m. news specifically, but any high impact news is going to take liquidity. And this is the only liquidity that's left on the short term basis. So we take that and then immediately um, rally higher. Then I was noting this uh, trade here. We didn't end up coming into discount here. Um, and I was just targeting this short term uh, buy side here. This was one of those examples where if you would enter right there, you see the RR would be really shitty to target that high, which is why I wanted this to come down to the mean threshold of the dealing range, but we didn't get that. Um, but we still respected the fair valley gap, traded higher, took this buy side. And then I was watching these equal highs here and we created this other fair valley gap here. My hypothetical entry was here, just targeting this short term um, high created here. Stop was underneath this low. And we ended up consolidating in this and then lunch uh, session or just before lunch session took out the equal highs and took out the, this was a previous Thursday's high here um, in during the lunch session. And pretty much right there, that was the end of the day for me because these were my liquidity targets. Um, PM session ended up rallying higher. To be honest, I was not expecting this. I was expecting to have displacement down because here it's Friday. We just took significant buy side. I thought that based on power three um, of the weekly candle, we were going to retrace back into the weekly range, but none of that happened here. Uh, but also there, was, there wasn't any significant displacement to the downside. I mean, we we're just respecting bullish for valley gaps, right? There was no break in market structure to the downside anyway for you to potentially get into a bearish trade. Um, but I'm just saying like, I was not expecting price to continue higher in the PM session. So overall, um, Monday and, and Friday were beautiful, beautiful trades, um, many opportunities to get in. So, um, I'm pretty happy with this week because I, I pretty much read Monday's trading and Friday's trading spot on. Um, and I mean, that's all you need to, to be profitable. So. I'm pretty happy with this week going into next week. Um, honestly, I don't really have a bias anymore um, because I went back to the high time frame uh, this morning and to take this off the monthly, it's going to annoy me on the monthly chart. Um, we're just in consolidation. So, right, since November of last year, the ranges have been getting smaller and smaller, uh, which means that there's gonna probably be some big expansion coming soon. Um, and you could see the same thing here on the weekly chart and same thing on the daily chart. So I noted this, the same breaker in Fair Valley Gap, but the mean threshold of this Fair Valley Gap and the mean threshold of this breaker have already been violated. We smashed up through it. Um, I mean, there was re there was no retracement at all in this candle. <laughs> like we made the high right there and just barely closed off of the high. So there was no retracement into the weekly range at all. Um, so to be honest, I don't really know what to expect. I don't think that this is going to 
um, trade up higher next week and then sell off. Uh, I don't really know uh, because, again, those, the mean threshold of these two PDA raises are already violated. So I'm just going to wait to see what Monday's trading does. Um, and we do have a pretty crazy week in terms of high-impact news. It's non-farm payroll, so likely Friday is off the table for trading. And then we have these two Fed Powell testifies news, which could go either way. It could be crazy manipulation or just nothing. So I don't know. Um, so yeah, we'll see what this week brings, but I'm just not too sure on the daily chart here. And we also have this intermediate term high break in market structure bullish. So for me, I, I don't, I don't have a bias right now. I could see this going both ways. We have equal highs up here that it could reach for. Um, and we also on the weekly, we hit the consequent encroachment of this weekly wick. That wick right there. Um, and the daily order block, right? And we're having bullish displacement off of the daily order block. So I think the best thing to do is just to wait to see what price does. Do we print bearish price action inside this daily breaker and fair valley gap on Monday and Tuesday that potentially is going to send it lower? Or does Monday and Tuesday not print any bearish price action and we just blow through this breaker and fair valley gap? I think if we end up closing above this here, a daily closure above this, um, then we're going to be coming for these equal highs up in here. And again, since the, since the monthly chart um, is pretty much in consolidation, uh, that higher time frame is parent to the daily. So even though I would like to see this market maker, potential market maker sell model play out, um, I'm not sure if it's going to do that. So we'll, we'll see what price prints um, in this upcoming week. So yeah.